right. Our last part we need to make is our carriage here. Now, looking at this, it doesn't look too difficult. You know, we have a shape here that comes around and comes down, like steps down. We have some little pegs for wheels. But the longer we look at it, the more difficult it might start to appear. This shape is actually fairly hollow. So this is our front view that shows us most of the detail. And our side view, which is here, shows us that there isn't anything up here and we have some random lines here. And my front view corresponds to my right side view. So if I transfer a line over, if I bring this line over, it corresponds to this line. This line right here, if I bring it over, corresponds to this line. And same with our hidden lines down here. So if I bring my hidden line over, it corresponds to this one. And this hidden line, which I don't see any shape here other than the hidden line, corresponds to this one. So essentially, what this is telling us is this area in the middle, as well as this area in the middle, is hollow. And we have this little kind of almost sideways C shape representing or acting as like a bracket or bracing for most of this part. So the way I'm going to draw this part is I'm going to start by drawing this shape. So I'm going to have like a little C on its side, essentially. And then I'm going to add on to it these side panels here and then the wheels afterwards. So we can see that if, well, we'll start our origin in this bottom corner here. Looking at my dimension, this is 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go 3 eighths by 1 and draw a rectangle. I'm going to come over and draw another rectangle. And then I'm going to have one more rectangle down here. So let's start a new part and start a sketch on our front. And again, I'm going to start with a rectangle. And I can add my dimensions. Instead of having to add the dimensions later, I can just add them now. So I have 0.375 for my width. And to get to my dimension right here, I click Tab on my keyboard. And I can type in my height. So there's my first one. Then I can come over. And how long is this one? All right, this one is going to take some math to figure out how long it is. So for now, I'm going to actually just skip the length of it or the width of it and do just the height of it, which is also 3 eighths of an inch. Oops. And then we have our bottom part. Oops. And we can see this bottom rectangle here starts three-eighths of an inch in and comes over. Or sorry, not three-eighths of an inch in. That also is going to take some math there to get that dimension. So for now, I'm going to just draw a rectangle as such. So this rectangle can slide back and forth. It can also go up and down. Now this line should correspond to this line. So again, I'm going to use a horizontal constraint to kind of make it do that. And now I can just slide back and forth. So we need to figure out how long this whole part is. And we need to figure out the dimension between this line and oops, dimension between this line and this line. So we need to know that dimension inside there. So let's do that first. And to do this, we need to do some basic math. So from the end of our carriage, to the end of our wheel is 7 eighths of an inch. Then our wheel is 3 eighths of an inch. And then this little bracket in here is 3 eighths of an inch. So whatever this distance here is would be 7 eighths minus 3 eighths minus 3 eighths. Now give it to us there. So let's do that. I'm going to do 7 divided by 8 minus 3 divided by 8 minus 3 divided by 8 that will give me 0.125 for that distance. So that's great, except I still need to do my overall length. And we kind of have the same issue here. Of Our overall length is the, for this inside part here, is 4 and 1 eighth, except it's going to be subtracted from 
um, this little thing in here. And we need to account for this part right here as well. So to do that, I'm going to do a dimension from the very end to the very end. And I'm going to just do 4 and 1 8 minus 1 8 of an inch. We now know that's 1 8 of an inch because we did that same math over here. See, these dimensions are identical. So in other words, it's just 4 inches. And that's that inside area there. Now, we're going to extrude it. We see that it's, looking at my right side view, it's 1 and 1 quarter of an inch. So we go to extrude. And I need to select what shapes I want. Well, I want all three, so I'm going to select all three. And type in from my distance 1.25 for 1 and a quarter. And there's that shape now. Now I'm going to add this side on it. I'm going to draw this shape on the side of it. And then from there, I'm going to extrude it and then copy it to the other side. So we're going to start a new sketch on the side of our shape. And I'm going to just draw that shape out. So it extends out a little bit and then comes up quite a bit. I'm going to skip that little circle. I'll come back and add that later. And then I have this little step thingy. And the last step lays on top of that and come over and all the way back. All right. So we can see that's kind of like that, except I'm missing the circle, which I'll add after I do all my other dimensions. All right. So now we're going to add some dimensions here. So this overall length is 4.125. And then this length here is 1.5. And then this step is 0.75. This step is 7 eighths, which is 0.875. And there's all of my width dimensions. So I can still move up and down, so I need to add those dimensions. My overall height is 1 and 3 quarters. And then each of these little steps is a quarter of an inch. And I don't need to put one here, because it already knows that just from other math that it did, essentially. All right, so now we need to do that little circle cutout. So that's in the center of this line. And it has a radius of 3 16 So I'm going to do 3 divided by 16 times 2 and get that dimension. And I don't actually need to trim that away because when I go to extrude now, maybe I do have to trim it away. So it is covering over that, so it's not recognizing that that's different. So I am going to need to trim that away. And again, things got messed up. Because I deleted that, it no longer knows that these need to be horizontal to each other. I know. Or that, that dimension will come on. This point is 0.75. All right, I still got some green lines, so we got to figure out what happened there. This whole thing can move up, so we just got to tell it that, hey, there to there is horizontal to each other. Now, if I go to extrude, there we go. I'm good to go. So it's three eighths of an inch wide. There's what it would look like so far. Now, I want to copy this onto this side of the object. So to do that, I need to put a what's called work plane down the exact middle of this object here. And so I'm going to click on plane and click on this surface on the other side. And I want it to go down the middle. So if you can see, I can kind of make it like lock to other things. I want to click on this inside surface here, and when I do that, you can see it makes a surface, right, what's called a work plane, which is like a thing I can work off of, down the exact middle of this part. Then I can just mirror this side. So I'm going to click mirror, and it's first asking me to select features, so that's this whole shape here. 
Then selecting a mirror plane, that would be that work plane I just created. And then I can click OK, and hey look, it just copies it to the other side. So that's pretty cool, except I'm actually going to undo that. So I'm going to click Control-Z. And we can see that our pegs for our wheels are the exact same on both sides. So I'm going to just draw my pegs on one side and then mirror all of that together. So to draw my pegs, I'm going to use that work plane I just created to have, we have rectangles coming out to this distance, and then we have circles for the rest of it. So I'm going to create a sketch on that surface and then slice my geometry so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And again, we have some rectangles. So I'm going to just draw two rectangles that are the right dimensions. We have two of them. And then I need to know where they go. So they go in three-eighths of an inch. I'm sorry, seven-eighths of an inch from the end to the far side of it. So 0.875. And I can still move up and down. So I just need to tell Inventor that I want this to be horizontal to my origin. And there we go. So I'm going to extrude them. And you can tell it's it wants to extrude it the other way. I don't want it to go that way. So on my extrude tool, I'm going to just click direction 2. And then it extrudes out that way. Now, to get how far those go, they go from my center to here. So my center to here is one eighth of an inch, or sorry, one inch because the whole width is two inches. And then I need to add a little bit here, which we're going to have to do some math of half of three and three eighths minus five eighths to get that dimension there. Actually, no, we don't. Sorry. It tells us it right here. So right there, we, it tells us that that dimension between the wall and here is one sixteenth of an inch. So I just have to do one plus one sixteenth, which gives me one one sixteenth. So I can do 1 plus 1 divided by 16. And we have those little pegs coming out. Now we have circles coming out 5 eighths of an inch longer. So I'm going to just create a sketch on here. I'm going to go a little angle so I can see the surfaces I do. And let's draw a circle. And it doesn't really matter where you draw it exactly except I'm just lining it up to the center point of that line. So I want to make it so that this circle touches, so my center point goes from here to here, and this line connects exactly to the, those endpoints. So to do that, I can use this tangent tool here. And if we have a tangent line, well, you can watch the video if you hover over it, Essentially, it makes a circle just kind of graze over a line. So I'm going to click on that, click on the circle, and click on the line. I'm going to do that again for the side. And I can actually do that again for the bottom, and now I'll lock it in to being a 3 8 inch circle. Do it on the other side. So I can just use three tangencies to make that circle the right, uh, everything, essentially. Then I want to extrude those out. And they extrude 5 eighths of an inch. And there's that side. All right, so let's go mirror this now. So I want to select both that geometry, those pegs, and those rectangles. And our mirror plane is that work plane I created. And click OK, and there we go. It's on both sides now. Now, I don't want that work plane anymore. It's kind of gross. So I'm going to right click on it and click Suppress Features. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Um, I'm going to right click on my work plane and select Visibility. And now that's gone. Now, this was also usually made out of wood. So I'm going to go to Oak again. Look at my mass. And you should have a mass of 0 0.205 pounds for this to be correct. So let's go save it. And it's called the carriage. Oh, 
and there's all of my parts. So now I just gotta assemble. Assemble.